Dr. Oppenheim, can you please provide more information about Gardasil 9, the human papilloma virus, HPV, and um, its link to cervical cancer? Yeah, so um, I think this vaccine is actually one of the coolest things out there because it's you don't have a lot of vaccines that can actually prevent cancer in somebody. Um, I thought it was the coolest one until the mRNA COVID vaccine came out, but it's <laughs> kind of close neck and neck. So HPV, um, human papillomavirus, is a, it's a group of viruses <clears throat> that can cause a disease anywhere from as benign as sort of like a wart on your hand to warts not so benign on your genital area, penile warts. And then also for some strains of the HPV um, they can cause cervical cancer. And so what we now know is that there's a link between chronic HPV infection and cervical cancer. So HPV is actually very common. Um, it's actually so common that we don't even check people under 30 for it unless they have an abnormality on their pap because data shows that for sexually active young people, because it is a sexually transmitted virus for the cervical cancer causing ones, um, it's very common. So. You know, the, the important things to know about HPV is that HPV infection is quite common if you're sexually active. The nice thing about it is, is that for most women with a healthy immune system, you can, you know, about 70% of, of women will get rid of that HPV within about two years if they have a healthy immune system. And even some people with a healthy immune system will still have HPV. And those are the, the patients that we really worry about. We don't worry so much about cervical cancer for women who have um, an HPV infection that lasted a year. Um, when we, you know, it's gone, it's not really gonna cause a lot of disease. We really worry about that smaller percentage of people that have persistent infection with HPV. So what we know is that over time with infection, you can, the cells change slowly, but they will develop, um, they can develop into cervical cancer. This is why pap smear screening is so great because it's a form of screening that can pick up the disease very early on in the disease before you even get to the cancer stage. So there's a lot of intervention you can do um, to prevent that ab those abnormal cells from becoming cancer. So the Gardasil vaccine, though, the way it works is it boosts your immunity to the actual, to certain strains that cause, H, uh, that cause cervical cancer. And when you have a stronger immune system and your body sees that HPV, uh, you can fight it. And so you're much less likely to have um, a chronic infection with HPV. And so this initially came out in 2006. Um, and initially it was only FDA approved for girls for a short term. Now, now we know it's FDA approved for boys as well because boys help transmit uh, the, the virus, so you've got to really vaccinate both parties. Girls obviously are the ones that can get cervical cancer, but men can have, it's rarer, but you can get some infections in your genital area from HPV as well. And so now the current FDA approval is nine and above, nine up to 45 in cer certain circumstances, but definitely nine to 26, uh, boys and girls. The vaccine is typically given around um, 11 is typically when uh, most parents would prefer to give the vaccine. Um, and we give it in two shots before the age of 15. If you're after 15, uh, it's three. It's very, very effective if given before initiation of sexual activity. And the kind of the cool stuff is the studies now, because it's been out for so long, they've really shown a reduction in cervical cancer related to areas where people get this vaccine very frequently. So again, it's, it's such a cool vaccine because I feel like if I could get a vaccine for colon cancer, breast cancer, I mean ovarian cancer, I mean people would line up for it. So I strongly encourage all parents to get this vaccine into the arms of their children, boys and girls.